Welcome to the map here in the alien BFME1 on the patch 2.22 for a video commentary between good and evil in a 1v1 matchup. Rohan vs. Isengard. Mary has been recruited to farm opening. He's gonna capture this one right off the bat. That means it's gonna be more economical opening. He will not recruit any peasants anytime soon. And that's what you can do with Rohan. Rohan has plenty of options. You can go for a stable rush which Rohan can do much easier than Gondor because the stable costing less and obviously the Rohirrim also being cheaper. The Uruks are chasing Merry, but he's gonna micro, you know, hit and run. Now you see me, now you don't. Okay, he will be able to get cloaked, no problemo. Now the Uruks are kind of damaged, but remember he can always use the Warchan and that's gonna be exactly the thing. We will see and in a one-on-one -on -one situation with or without warchan the peasant can't fight and win against the uruks one more uruk is gonna make it to the spot he is recruiting one more peasant from this farm and no peasants from the farm inside but he has one more peasant he was recruiting from this farm over there going for the steeple again in a one-on-one -on -one situation the peasants they can't win but in a one me two it's a different thing That's still great for Rohan because, you know, he was buying time for the peasants to arrive. Now the Uruks are kind of badly damaged. And the... I mean, maybe the Uruks can still take them down, by the way. Because many of them are still healthy and they can always use the block formation for the combat stat. Um, so far, no economical damage dealt to Aizen at all. And he will have a good eco. But he went only for the Uruk pit opening. That means he didn't go for the Uruk pit furnace opening. And his eco for that reason isn't looking too hot but he got the Urukpi to level 2 before the first Rohirrim was able to arrive this farm is going to be taken on I'm assuming and the Rohirrim might not be there in time yeah that this one is going to be going down Warchan is going to be available in the next five seconds he might need to use it on this Uruks we get to see more Uruks you want to use it use it use it he didn't use it trample but also, because of the trample, the Rohirrim received some sort of revenge damage. However, they get level 2 there, and that's a lot of power points for Rohan. And you need that, because your goal in this matchup is to get the 3 power point spike to summon your Elven Alliance. And also, this farm is going to be taken down. It's great for Aizen, because this farms will need ages to get to level 3. And there comes the Warchant. Beautiful decision to not engage on that one. When you want to when you trample into the Warch and the Uruks, the damage you will receive in return is going to be big. If even some pikemen, and now the creeping will start and begin. And for for Eisen, it's really important. It's actually extremely important to deny Rohan from creeping. You know, super important. So you want to be perma scouting with your Lambert Mill workers potentially. The slaughterhouse is going to be taken down. The Ur Warch and the Uruks are not going to the, to the goblin layer. But Rohan should be able to contest this without any problems. Ooh, nice flank damage. The pikeman there, but Rohirrim can always disengage that. That's no problem. The slaughterhouse here has been taken down. And we have also peasants as they are like a very cheap and effective counter to the pikeman. However, to counter that... Obviously, Eisen has to recruit his own counter, which are the Berserker. But later on, he can also go for the, for the Vork. He has no tower. Oh, he has towers. Oh, be careful there. Oh, my God. If he had a tower here, I also like to build tower here and also here. And even one in the back right there, you know? So, you have like three towers, which are totally fine at the beginning of the game. I mean, obviously, later on, you will need more than three sentry towers. But at the beginning or in the, in the early game stages... You don't have that much money. And also, the enemy has no heavy armor. It means that sentry towers will actually add a lot of work for your base defenses. The creep will be taken down by the Rohirrim warriors without problems. But Aizen is still good eco. Industry, of course, being super helpful. And maybe Lourdes, maybe Sharku could be a solid option. Sharku obviously better for killing those, pi uh, those uh, peasants way, way easier. And also he demolished the stable without buying the shields. 
So what's the plan of Rohan? That's the big question. We, have the new farm. we will find out though, very very soon. Also I was gone for a very long time, maybe the method changed. And watch on this bike man taking care of the lair. After the first couple of minutes into the game, we see Resho, that's the Isengard player, going for Lourdes. He has almost two power points collected after the Warchand and in Industry. And his opponent, the Rohan player Mathieu, has 250 obviously command points, he has 2000 in the bank, and has collected two power points after the draft and the heal. So he could skip the heal and go for the Elven summon, but I'm assuming he won't, he's not planning to go any for any rushes in the base of Aizen. Because he didn't go for upgrades, not also not for the shields. I'm expecting to see a hero potentially. Let's see who it's going to be. Lords got experience, beautiful micro death from Aizen, got him to level two, one full level, just like that. And obviously, level three will make Lords to a super ultra anti-hero hero. And all these weak heroes like Legolas, for example. If they ever get crippled by Lords, when Lords is level 3, Lords can take them now solo. Without needing any help. Armory, good eco for Aizen, good map control. Ooh, Warchan has been used, kill the Berserker? Yes, sir. But, uh, you know, guess I'm. Never mind. The peasants were badly damaged, that's why. They couldn't finish off the. Pikeman, but the Alvin summon will do the job without any problems. Beautiful. And also, one part of the money was taken by Rohan. He's gonna also get the creep at the top side, getting lots of power points. And of course, the elves will kind of help him to get a bit more momentum going. Maybe clean up the map from the Pikeman a little bit and get a bit more map control for more snowballing effect. That's super important for Rohan, as Rohan is one of the factions that requires the most amount of resources to get to the spike he needs. But for now, we have Legolas, a hero who can always add lo a lot of damage to the table. However, he's like a glass cannon, you know? He's not super tanky, so you need to avoid getting crippled by Lourdes. Lourdes is as fast as Legolas, so if, if you keep running, he cannot catch up to you. However, he could always use the Palantir from his spellbook, you know, to get a bit more movement speed bonus, which can help him to close the gap in the distance. And when you get crippled, you will most likely die, you know? But Aizen is losing map to basically peasants without upgrades because he didn't go for the Vorgs. Vorgs also could be amazing against Legolas, as he's again a very squishy hero, and Vorgs can catch him, unlike Pikeman. And without Vorgs, you don't have an effective way of fighting for the, for the map control against the peasants, you know? Also, Theoden has been recruited. One of the things you can do with Rohan is you can recruit every hero that is able to throw a projectile, you know? Eowyn, Spy, uh, Spear, Eoma Spear, Hawk Strike from Legolas, and obviously Extra from Gimli. And all of that combined have the damage potential to burst down pretty much any hero in the game. And Lourdes not being the tankiest hero of the game will most likely get one-shotted, shredded. Smite, smite, extra hog strike, and he will die, you know? Or he will be very close to die, to be dead. So, you see, that, that's like the very easy counter, because you have only one type of a unit, and all your opponent has to do is get some peasants, give them bleeds, draft, and also heavy armor. Lords, of course, running them down with the carnage. And a whole battalion will be taken down. Oh, kill him, finish him actually. It's like over a thousand resources there, by the way. Lords being exposed. The pikemen are not in position. But it looks like he will be in safety. Now, without carnage, Legolas doesn't need to be afraid, you know. And he has also only one pikeman. Again, you see the peasants are doing a phenomenal job. Kind of forcing the Isengard player into a jail situation. He's in prison. He can't get out just because of that structure which was missing. So you, what you want to do is you want to go for the warp pit before you go for the upgrades. You know, not always, but 90% of the time. Like nine out of ten games, when you see your opponent getting to spam soldiers from Gondor and also peasants from Rohan, 
It's like the natural counter because even without upgrades, your works can still crush the enemy peasants with upgrades, you know, because it's like a hard counter to them. And works have the whole ability for the self boost of damage. And if that's not enough, you have also the war chant, so you can easily fight the peasants. And it will kind of prevent your opponent to spam more peasants because they will feed you a lot of power points. Then you can go for the armory because to the, with the help of the works, you will have also more map control and more money. Land was placed from Rohan and Eisen will be covering it. It means the rain won't be super effective later on. Lourdes is still on level 3, still needs one level and a half to get his leadership unlocked from the spellbook and from his powers. Later on, you might also need to see Saruman. But for now, Eisen has to spend a lot of money into making combos, the crossbow man Uruk or the crossbow man Pikeman combo, and give them all kind of upgrades. Banner, heavy armor, forge bleeds, pyros. Big rush incoming, but no shields. They are not very tanky against arrows. And also some of the structures are being level 3. Dealing lots of damage, not demolishing structures in time, feeding lots of power points, level 3 already for Theodine. In those situations, what you want to do is you want to aim on Theodine, you know? With all your towers, because he's super squishy hero. In the meantime, we have a fight going on over there. Um, Alvin summoned from the Spellbook of Rohan, fighting against the combos. But your Lourdes has to be around this location to cripple Theodine. Did Lourdes actually die? Yes, he died. But I'm assuming he killed Legolas in exchange. Yes, he did. Okay, but Lourdes couldn't get any experience. He's still rank 3. So that, that's multitasking advantage there, you know, because Le Legolas, I mean, Eisen trying to kill Legolas gives like the opportunity in the window for Rohan to go for a beast, a rush, and he dealt great amount of damage. And because of the fight, was what was happening over there, Eisen wasn't able to demolish the structures in time, giving Tyrion a lot of experience and getting him dangerously close to his glorious charge. Looks like we got some more labor scum. I mean, usually this matchup is going 50-50, you know. Aizen is definitely capable of winning this matchup when you camp in your base with Saruman Lourdes, a couple of combos, because the weakness of uh, Rohan is the lack of siege. You know, you can't really outrange with your army. You have elves, but... In a combo against combo fight, Eisen will win because of the rain, because of the more leadership situation. So your best chance is to hit, run, and to use your eco advantage because in this matchup, pretty much in every matchup against Rohan, it's super difficult to keep the map control. For Mordor it is, for Gondor it is, and also for Isengard. So Rohan should be the one who is controlling the majority of the map for the majority of the time. But now we have combos. Lourdes, when he gets level 5, that's going to be a whole different situation for Aizen. 60% raw damage means burst. So you will burst through this Rohirrim, Rohirrim Archer. And also heroes like Tyrion in a second. Um, I think he has no heal. Even if he has, there's no point. Give it to Lourdes. Uh, you want to give it to Lourdes in this situation. But that comes to Palantir for the movement speed boost. I mean, obviously, even with Palantir, you cannot catch up to the Rohirrim warriors. That's not possible. Legolas is also here. You can always farm power points, you know, use Hog Strike every 45 seconds and do that on repeat. Go use it, back off, you know? No outpost control. And that's something Rohan could work on, you know, get the outpost, build the statue well for the recovery. And obviously for more money, nothing wrong with that. It's the land from Eisen, obviously, you know, getting you. Now the works won't be super effective anymore. I mean, they can still do a lot of job because of the map control and, you know, harass the enemy farms over and over again. But you cannot win the fight at all against Rohirrim warriors because they have the number advantage, they have upgrade advantage, they have hero advantage. A good money for Aizen though, multiple level 3 furnaces, that's going to increase the durability of the base quite a lot. The base of Aizen will be ultra tanky. But also for Rohan, pretty much the same situation. He also went for the Grand Harvest on his farms, just to make sure that he has always good amount of money. Because he still needs to do a lot of stuff. Aragorn has to be recruited, he has still a lot of command points to be filled, you know. With Rohirrim Archer, which are the 
for me the best units in the game because of the shooting ability plus the mobility you have like a horse but in exchange you need to pay a lot of money for them like 400 for the fire rows uh, then you need to buy heavy armor banner like one of them will cost you around about 1500 resources which is one of the most expensive units you actually can get Now you see this, you know, when you see this, uh, you can always hide some Rohirrim warriors over there. They cost only 15 command points, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 20. So you pretty much put three of them here, 60 command points. And whenever you see your opponent being super aggressive, you can punish him with going for the bees and taking down some of the towers, you know. Legolas looking for a chance. Level 4 will... Pew! Boom! Level 4 will unlock the train archers, which also can be used on the Rohirrim archer. Because they are considered as an archer unit, you can give them free experience over and over again. Same also can be done from Theodin with the King's Fever once he's level 5. But the game is getting into a situation in which now Isengard can naturally save money for his Saruman, right? He doesn't need to do much more. Um, I think he's gonna make maybe one, two more combos, and then he will sit on the money and wait for the for the for the cash to kick in for Saruman. The outpost here will be taken down. Ron has now enough money for the for the Aragorn. Aragorn with Andrew's sword is almost as fast as the horses. You can always keep Aragorn with your main army. And when he's around your army, your army will deal 50% more damage too. It's a lot. But again, mobility advantage, you see? You can always play uh, carry a mouse, Tom and Jerry, with your opponent. Now, it's kind of debatable uh, who is getting the advantage over there when you play like this. You know, when you play for the, for the long run, when you play for the, for the long game. Like, obviously, at some point of the time, a player has to make a mistake. And I believe you giving Aizen that much time will make, him, will make it way easier for him to get the full strength he's looking for. Now, going for the Siege... It's gonna be difficult because your base is exposed. You have almost no defenses. Your couple of pikemen can't hold what's about to come. Lots of Rohirrim archers. They will burst down your pikemen in a second. So you need to rotate with your main army, and unless you make a secondary army in your base. But the army has to be with combos, pikemen, crossbowmen combo, and not only one of them. Couple of ballistas in there. And you see, whenever Aizen is coming close, um, Rohan can disengage without any problems. And now the, this is exposed. Now Rohan can go to this location and take down your siege works again. Aragorn no, no, has no Andrew's sword. He was greeting a little bit. He didn't want to invest two power points and without Andrew's sword. Uh, again, no experience for Lourdes. You don't want to miss... Oh, but beautiful experience share. He put Theodin next to Legolas with Talk Strike. Now he got level 4. There comes the glorious charge. And now what? Rain has been used, true. But remember, there is a land which Rohan can use to regain his leadership. And when you trample with the glorious charge into the enemy pikeman, you won't get one-shotted, but your damage... You won't get any damage to the pikeman, true, but you will kill or at least heavily damage the crossbowmen behind the pikeman. And they, they are the main damage dealers of the combo. And not of that it's possible because of Lourdes not being level 5. If Lourdes is level 5 here and you trample into the pikeman with the glorious charge, it doesn't matter. You will put, most likely get one shotted with low level units. The ballista exposed. And Rohan is getting to farm lots of power points. Highly level Rohirrim Warriors, level 9, level 4. And each level will give you more raw damage. Now, Saruman has been finally recruited. He's gonna be joining the battlefield very, very soon. Quite unlucky, if you ask me, that Lourdes still couldn't get level 5. And Legolas is doing a phenomenal job, by the way. Also, Gimli has been recruited. So, pretty much the, the full, full potential of Rohan... Besides Eoma, who you can also recruit, by the way. Eoma's spear throw can always one-shot the Vorks. And if you play for the long game, Eoma is always going to be the most valuable asset of your army. Because his level 4 is so damn great. Now, that comes to Fireball. Beautiful. 
almost a full level gotten immediately. Uh, that's gonna be close, but the level 9 will be able to survive. Now, he has 6 power points, okay? Rohan has 6 power points. The rain's effect will be gone by the time the base is gonna be opened. He's gonna go for the aim summon. And this army isn't looking too, too healthy to me. You see, but that's what I was talking about. The crossbowmen behind are super badly damaged, so you need time to recover from that. A glorious charge will be available. It's available. And also Aragorn will be there very, very soon. So I'm assuming with the right approach, Rohan should be able to defend against this little army. We are talking only about three combos with only Saruman leadership, plus Warchan obviously. But against ends, bunch of Rohirrim with glorious charge, lots of leadership. Ooh. Lord's got one shot it. He stole some of them, gotta be B-Link. Ah, uh, no, you can't. The ends are going to war. And all I can see is, I think he had the you know the possibility to get a bit more combos on uh, on the field like you have like one two more combos around this area a couple of mistakes could be always avoided you know hitting lords level five you can't rush forward and cripple a hero against a good player because even if you cripple him you can't kill him so put your heroes behind your army to provide leadership in those big epic fights the, the leadership is the most important thing Rain was used before out of no reason. There was not an actual fight, you know? All of these mistakes can determine the outcome of the game. Because of the fight, Rohan was able to get almost 4 power points in total. He killed Saruman, he killed Lourdes. Now he has also Anduri Sword. He actually got more than 4 power points because two of them were invested into the Anduri Sword. And Aizen got 9 power points, but he still needs 11 for his Balrog. And again, long revive timers for his heroes. Um, that's gonna be 2 minutes and 45 seconds, that's gonna be 2 minutes and 30 seconds. And the most important thing is that he has still no leadership on his lords, which again is super important. The Vorks are gonna be feeding lots of power points again to Rohan. You can't win the fight, by the way. You see the number advantage? It's massive. Him the level 3, has also leap attack. Uh, one of the combos you can do is you can use leap and just before your Gimli lands on the ground to deal the damage you put the elven wood underneath your enemy army they lose all their armor leadership and you jump jump and you kill them all get level 5 you slay them and then run down his heroes lords or saruman they can't get away and your opponent has to always cripple your uh, Gimli always by the way level 6 he was for me the MVP of this game. Putting him next to the theory and sharing experience. He went also for Elma. He's even merry with the army. What a giga chat. I like it. Map control is looking fine. Lord's back on the menu. Saruman is back on the menu. That's gonna be the round two. Potentially the next, but also the last big fat battle. If they go all in, of course. Three ballista. But again, only three combos. He has still 200 available command points. This is what I was talking about. You know, you can still at least throw in two more combos there. And that's what you need. You have 3.6k. You have the money. Keep producing more army. He's making... Yeah, finally. Okay, that's going to be combo number four. But the problem here is you want to use also speechcraft over and over again. The experience differential, you know. Look at the army. It's highly leveled. Thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate it. But this army is looking ultra dangerous to me. Again, GC is available. Oh, does he have rain? Yes, he has rain. He needs to use it. Use it. Saruman is going in for no reason. Saruman, be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful. Rain is active. Now it's a different situation. Lord's finally level 5. Let's go. All the bodies are gone. He crippled Aragorn. Will Aragorn die? He's a one-man army in between. He's gonna go down. Where is... Oh, Gimli is saying, no, you don't touch my captain like this. Gimli and Aragorn. <laughs> Legolas from behind, bro. Dealing hella damage. I think he lost Lourdes again. Yeah, 
that's what you can do look the enemy player is putting in so much war caring about his own heroes he didn't lose any hero including mary not even mary has been taken down <laughs> during this battle and legolas is level 7 by the way using arrow volley and that's the full lead game power of rohan ladies and gentlemen if you play it well if you play it right your Isengard will not have a choice but leave the game. GG, well played, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like to this video, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.